farming anyway is a way of life. It's not a job, it's a way of life. If you're going to be a farmer, to do, that's how you have to look at it. Um, and organics, definitely. It, you have to, I, from my personal point of view, is you have to work with nature. Of course, within organic farming, there's a whole spectrum. You're getting some organic farmers who just see that not using chemicals is the, is the answer, but they're still using the industrial model of inputs and outputs in their, in their head. And then you get fertility, that you have to start seeing the farm as a whole and there has to be a balance there. And that is one of the main principles of a biodynamic farm, that behind this concept you have that it, it has to be not bringing in inputs from outside, that you see that the whole farm is a kind of whole which has to be in balance, that you have to be able to produce all the feed for your animals off that farm, that they in turn, will, if you have the right balance of animals, will produce enough manures of different sorts to maintain and, and increase the fertility on the farm. The important for in biodynamics is to have the farm as an organism, so, so the farm is able to produce all its own manure and it's able to produce its own fertility. What people do here, uh, which is much more efficient, of course, is then to use the clover to feed it to your ruminants, to your cattle, to your sheep, you know, to your cows, um, and they in return give you manure. It's very important that we all try and go as organic as possible for the health of everyone and I think to try and reduce the amount of chemicals that we're using because firstly if it's the food is not organic you're eating a lot of chemicals anyway and then there's lots of chemicals used to grow that food so if you can go organic then it would reduce the damage to the environment that these chemical GMO crops cause. And then the on top of that, in uh, biodynamic farming, there is uh, the concept of the preparations, which, which are, I think, enhancing the manure to a way that the manure is able to really support the plant life, uh, uh, for it to support the animals and the people that live on the farm and feed off the farm. So again, you're creating this cycle of health and sustainability by having the cows eating grass that is suitable for them, that is healthy. And then this manure also goes into the vegetable garden, this manure also goes into producing grain and cereals, which then is fed the people through, through the farm shop. If you grow up with organic food, it's a very whole environment that you grow up in, so everything is affecting that food. And I think that makes you very aware of your environment and what you're bringing in and what you're putting out. So I think to learn to grow organically is um, vital for how you treat the earth, actually. And I think if you experience the goodness that the organics brings in to your food and to your environment, then you start to see what else needs to be done around you. So yeah, I think it opens your eyes. Our cows are all kept biodynamically, which means that um, you know, they're fed with um, hay and silage from our own farm. All, all of their food comes from our own farm, and it's all grown organically, and we use biodynamic preparations. Um, the cows have their horns, which we feel is very important for their digestive systems, which um, is also reflected in the milk, and the milk is more nutritious. Um, and uh, they get to... Um, be outside all through ye the year um, and in the summer months, spring, summer, autumn, they're, they're out on grass, eating grass, um, which is the most natural way for a cow and you can really taste in the milk that it is um, sort of fresher, more nutritious than um, uh, a lot of milk which is, you know, blended from many different farms and which isn't organic. I think the future is definitely for people to see uh, not just organic or uh, production, but uh, small scale, small scale production, which is much more manageable for people and is able to employ more people and empower more people as to where their food comes from and uh, to have healthy food and have a stronger connection with their food. Because uh, with industrial farming, 
we have lost connection with the source of our food and the quality of our food. One person can go to Sue and buy pepper, doesn't matter what time of the year. We are able to import fruit and vegetables from all over the world and we don't think about where our food comes from and how much effort goes into it. But in this farm here, it's a small farm, 200 acre farm, um, the people who, who are fed from this farm, the people who are in touch with this farm, get much more in touch with their food. Yeah, I eat mainly vegetarian, some fish, and I tend to buy from local farmers markets only. I hardly ever enter a supermarket anymore and eat mainly organic food. Mainly vegetarian? Uh, <laughs> I was vegetarian completely for, it was only two years. Um, but I will eat the meat from this farm or from our sister farm, Tablehurst, because it's biodynamic. I know the people looking after the animals and I know what food they're eating and their, um, their environment that they've grown up in. So as long as I know that, I'm happy to eat the meat. I became vegetarian when I was six, um, so I, I haven't eaten meat in a long time. And um, I think probably if I wasn't already vegetarian, then I would probably eat organic and biodynamic meat, but I don't really have any need for meat now, so I stay vegetarian. I, I was vegetarian as a child, and the whole family was vegetarian. Um, but I, I only eat organic meat, really, or biodynamic. I mean, vegetarian food and organic as well. There are methods which are available which can show that we're not just talking about minerals and pure substance, but there are forces in our food and working in nature. And one of those methods was developed by Pfeiffer when he developed the chromatography. And, uh, and Dr. Kalisko as well with the crystallization method. And uh, by using that method, you can see other than just the chemical constituents of something, but it actually shows completely different picture depending on how alive or dead it is, if there are forces in that or not. And, uh, and these pictures are quite objective and, and, and it's absolutely clear. You can take a dead soil and take a sample from that and one which has been enlivened of that same soil with compost and, and biodynamic methods and it creates a completely different picture. Each farm is a, a small community of friends and not only colleagues. For being interested in organic agriculture and what the farm does here is um, to do with the fact that you can involve the community in it and also when you work with biodynamic agriculture or organic agriculture you're actually producing food that people can trust. So after I became more interested in organic food and, and growing my own food and cooking my own food, I, I got also interested in what isn't organic or the conventional and, and the use of GMOs. And me personally, I'm completely against using GMOs when you're cooking or, or eating or, or anywhere because they unfortunately are everywhere. The plant is genetically modified. It's missing a vital part of the life of the plant. And when you consume that, you're also missing that vital part of life. Yeah, I personally don't believe or believe in GMOs because of the health benefits of health for people and for the, for the planet as a whole. I don't think the that gene splicing is, is an advantage. I haven't seen proof of it getting better yields. The only potential downsides, I think, and this, which is why I avoid it, is that it'll have an effect on us. GMO food, I think, is a limiting food source. Uh, it limits your diet, it limits the variety you can eat, and it makes you very dependent on the seed companies that produce this GMO seed. Uh, you can't save the seed, you can't grow next year from the same seed, so for me that raises questions about how good it is for you if, it, if it's not fertile enough to produce its own seed that is viable, then to eat food like that. I don't know how good that is for your body. It's got a terminator gene in it, which means that the, 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 the 
the plant is not able to produce seeds for the next generation, how does that affect, so on a, on a material level, on a nutrient level, maybe there is nothing there. It's the same as organic or biodynamic soya. But uh, for me, from a quality point of view, I ask the question, how does it affect my, fer my own fertility if I'm eating food that is not able to carry its offspring, is not able to produce uh, the next generation? It's got, it's a, not just only not able to, it's got a gene that, uh, that is a terminator, that kills it. The, the risk of uh, cross-contamination not only from one plant to the other but from one plant to bacteria to other organisms and so on and so on it's uh, you don't know what you're unleashing you have no idea but what one thing is absolutely sure whatever you do it's completely irreversible you will never be able to stop it again once it's out there it will be out there if it's working out in a bad way there's no way to reverse this process. I'm very suspicious of GMOs. Um, I have to say, I always try to buy from local farms when I don't get my food from my own farm. Um, and then I know I can trust the food. I know that I can talk to the farmers and see how it was made um, and you know understand the attitude of the people who made it. So that's really important to me, um, GMOs. Um, have clearly, you know, they've, it, historically they've been associated with using pesticides, they've been associated with, um, uh, you know, infertility of seeds um, and things like that, um, and exploitation of farmers. So, um, personally, I stay clear of them as much as I can. But um, also um, in the UK, as well as in a lot of countries, sometimes, unless you are buying organic, it's impossible to know because they don't label that something has got GMOs in it. So.